All right, great. Thanks, everyone. Again, my name is Shailesh Rao. If you need an easy mnemonic, stylish brow. You see that? <laughs> Very stylish. Takes a lot of effort, but helps people remember my name. Oh my God. Uh, I run Good. Go to Market for Cortex. And uh, thank you all for being here. Really appreciate you all spending the afternoon with us. I know there's been a lot of uh, information. What I wanted to do, and uh, with my colleague Giora, who is uh, head of product management for Cortex, what we want to do is spend the next 15 minutes talking about Cortex at a high level, but Giora will also dive deep into it a little bit more, give you a quick demo. Not enough time, but hopefully we can give you just a quick flavor of what it is um, that Cortex is all about. Um, most, most of us spend a lot of time preventing attacks, and that's clearly where 99% of the effort should be, because if we can prevent everything, obviously that's a great start. The problem is there's still that 1%, in some cases less than 1%, but there's that piece which we cannot prevent, and that's where most of the danger lurks. And we talk to customers, and they say anywhere between 20 to 40% of the alerts are the maximum that they can get to. This is with great technology, great people, at best, they can get to maybe 40%. So what about all the others that they don't track, that they don't know about? And, you know, I'd love to be, I, I tell my team, I tell this to people, I'd love to be in an industry where we're just talking about unicorns and rainbows. Unfortunately, we live in an industry where there are bad guys out there. And so we have to focus all our efforts on preventing, but we can't ignore that piece which we can prevent, and therefore we've got to figure out how to detect and respond to it. Now. What the state of the art is, and you were listening to Nir before, he said what this industry has done is we've created more tools and all they've done is created more alerts. So this is typically what a SOC analyst deals with. They have a lot of screens in front of them and each one promises to take care of one point solution or offers one point solution, puts it in a silo, and what they end up with is more and more and more alerts. So at the end of the day, most SOCs are facing more alerts from more systems by itself, that's a problem, but what makes it worse is that there aren't enough people in the industry to handle all those alerts. Um, you know, depending on various, you know, whichever source you want to look, they all point to the same direction, anywhere between 1 million to 3 million cybersecurity professionals that are needed, that aren't present. I think you all live this every day, I'm sure you believe. Um, you see that every day. So what we end up with is a situation where there's way too many alerts and not enough people to handle them. So what do we need to do? We need to obviously take we believe is the right approach, which is spend every, all the effort you can in preventing, provide the best prevention that's possible. And then, what do you need to do with the stuff that isn't preventable? You have to be able to detect attacks, but in an industry that suffers from a chronic shortage of skilled people, trying to solve that problem with more people or better people is not the answer. Because the bad guys out there are not restricting themselves to just what they can do individually. They're using every bit of technology out there. They're using compute, which is I don't know, more or less free. Storage is more or less free. And they're not looking to target a specific company a lot of times. They're not looking for a specific thing. They're just out there and saying, well, whatever sticks, we'll see what, what I get out of it. So you can take a problem that has been created through automation and try to solve it by using people, which means you've got to use automation. You've got to try to understand what these attacks are, and then investigation and response to them has to also be as automated as possible. And then you heard Neil talk about this. It's not enough if you do it just across the endpoint, because then again, what you're doing is creating another silo. You got to do it across network, endpoint, and cloud. And that's what Cortex really does. So what we bring together with Cortex is the ability to take very rich information across your network, across your endpoint, across your cloud, and the real value is in A, the rich data that we take. B, we put them all into the Cortex data lake. It's highly normalized. It has all of the, uh, you know, all of the analytics, all of the intelligence that's built in. And it's able to stitch together information across all of these three, these three areas of your in infrastructure and then identify the root cause of these threats, prevent as many of them as possible, and where we can prevent them, present them to you in an application called XDR, which gives you better context, better visibility, better integration than anything else we've seen in the market. And so the ability to integrate and stitch all of that data together and provide the intelligence that an analyst needs is really what the magic of Cortex is all about. Okay, so we wanna prevent everything that we can, detect automatically what we cannot prevent, because again, trying to solve this problem with people is not going to, you're not, it's not, not only is it not going to scale, we don't think it's even going to work. Because there's way too many alerts, not enough people. 
And you have to be able to investigate this rapidly as quickly as possible, again, using as much automation as you can, and then respond and adapt as your needs grow. So what Cortex brings together is the ability to take all of this information together across network, endpoint, and cloud, put it into a highly normalized and very, um, you know, very intelligent data lake, and then bring that intelligence to the SOC analyst or to the SOC so that they can then identify you know, first of all, we reduce the number of alerts, so they get a very small number of alerts, which are you know, highly curated. We give them all the visibility that they need, and they can quickly either respond to them. And if it's a one-time response, then they can automate that. And you will see not just from Giora's demo how we do that, and also after me, my colleague from uh, um, you know, um, Rishi will talk about how Demisto can even orchestrate and automate that even further. So with that, Giora, take it away. Thanks. So maybe I'll, I'll see because I'll, uh, I'll do the demo. Uh, so I wanted to maybe spend a few, uh, like maybe a, a minute or, or so, talking about the type of data and uh, what we do with the with the data and you know, what's special about uh, the way that we handle the data, uh, and then show how that uh, uh, plays, you know, when we want to uh, uh, to use it for accurate detection and investigation. So as you can see, th there are a lot of different contexts uh, for the data. There is network data, endpoint data user data and, and thread data, it, it actually comes from a lot of different sensors. Uh, network data comes naturally mostly from the firewalls, but, but actually also uh, from the endpoints. Uh, when I talk about network data, we're, we're actually talking about all the different, all the connections that come from the network, right? I mean, every, each and every single connection uh, has some meaning because if you, if you want to do analytics and you want to uh, see trends over time, you need to see everything. Uh, endpoint data includes uh, the networking information, but also all, all the processes that are spun up, all the modules that are loaded, and so on. Uh, user information naturally has all the, all the user context of everything. So there is really a lot of data out there. And uh, if we look at each silo separately, uh, there is really no connection between you know, these different types of data. You can see uh, data from the endpoint, uh, separately from data from the network, but actually it's really the same thing. Th these are the same connections that, that uh, you know, come into play. Um, and uh, we actually need to stitch them together into, uh, into one data set in order to, to make it meaningful, uh, both for detection and also for investigation. Uh, so this is some uh, part of the, of the stitching that we do is really taking the different data sources and uh, creating one representation that, uh, that, that is you know, what, what happened in, in the back end, uh, not just from a specific silo. Um, then the, the second topic, just you know, before uh, uh, showing it um, uh, on the demo, uh, I'll say a few words about analytics. So how does analytics work? Uh, so the, uh, what we're trying to solve with analytics is really uh, getting to a very small number of highly actionable alerts that are meaningful and, and you know, relevant in, in uh, your organization. Um, and, and the way we do it is by uh, uh, learning about or profiling the, the different users and, and machines in, in the organization. And um, uh, we uh, uh, have these uh, different types of profiles that we create. And all of that is hap happens automatically. The system uh, learns the normal behavior of each and every user, each and every machine, and creates these different profiles, time profile, peer profiles. The concept there is that once we, once we observe a new behavior, uh, we have all the context about what's normal for that user what's, and, and what's not, and what's normal for other users in the organization and what, what's not. So for example, if we see somebody running remote commands on another machine, uh, which is something that happens you know, thousands of times in every network, uh, we can determine if, if it's actually normal for that user and you know, towards that destination or if it's abnormal. Because if it's abnormal, it could be part of an attack or you know, an active lateral movement inside the network. Uh, but if it's normal, it's one of these thousands of, of, of cases that are normal. So we, we need to differentiate between those two. And this is, how, this is the, you know, the uh, gist of how uh, analytics uh, works. So with that, let's move to the demo. You know, demo is more visual, so you know, hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, you know, good use of the time. Um, so this is um, our uh, incidents uh, screen. Uh, incidents for us, uh, the concept of incidents is re really uh, bringing together different types of alerts that are related to the same uh, artifacts, uh, meaning the same processes or the same devices and so on. Um, so, so this is, you know, one of these alerts has high severity. Let's open that incident and, uh, and see what's inside. When we open the incident, uh, we see that there are actually uh, two different uh, PCs that are uh, part of that incident, two different users. Um, and there are these processes that, are, that uh, come into play. Maybe I'll enlarge it a little bit. Uh, so we, we have WinRAR, we have curl, and, and you know, this uh, uh, kernel that, that's marked as, as red, this, this one is, is actually malicious. Uh, but it's not enough to just look at a malicious one because we want to see what, what happened there and if, it's, uh, if it requires more attention than just you know, looking, looking at that alert. Um, so let's see, uh, check 
the little check by the signature slot. Yeah. What was that for? Yeah, that, that says that the signature is validated. So, okay. so you can actually trust the file signature. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that the file was used for good intentions, right? Because you know, maybe somebody you know, was, was using it to unpack malware or something like that. Um, so I, I just opened the, um, the uh, more detailed view. And, and here you can see the execution chain. Let me maybe enlarge it this way. So we can see that WinRAR uh, was the, um, uh, what we call the group owner. This is the, uh, the significant process that started all of that. Um, it actually ran a, a command line that uh, ran all these other processes, other, uh, curl and PowerShell. And if you wonder why WinRAR was, uh, was running, we can actually look at the parent and see here that actually somebody was um, you know, using Opera to, uh, to browse the web and probably downloaded some file, right? So this is, uh, this is probably the, the reason for, for uh, WinRAR. Then uh, specifically, uh, if we want to, to see the command line, we can see that uh, somebody was uh, using the command line because they wanted to open this uh, particular file that was uh, you know, within that, within that uh, RAR, within that archive. Uh, so that file was, you know, was mimicking uh, uh, you know, maybe an interesting file to look at, but it's actually uh, malware. And uh, in, in turn, what, what happened is that it, you know, it opened all these processes that did this you know, command control, um, upload, uh, 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 basically downloaded the malware and uh, installed the, um, the malware on, on the machine. Uh, so we actually we got quite a few uh, alerts on, on that. We, we have an alert from Traps, from the endpoint protection, uh, running this through the cloud service that analyzes uh, uh, file samples. But we also got some, uh, some, other, uh, some other events. For example, we see that this is actually a firewall event uh, for command and control. Uh, we see that the firewall detected uh, some uh, command and control traffic. So there is a signature for that particular type of, uh, of, mar of malware that was detected by the firewall. The interesting thing is that once, once we stitch everything together, we see that it's all related to the same processes because we, we get the, the errors from the firewall, we get the information from, uh, from the endpoint, and we can stitch it together and we see that, that it's really actually part of the same uh, uh, incident, so it really helps us with the investigation, also helps us with you know, understanding the meaning of uh, what happened. Um, so this is, uh, this is you know, uh, one example. Uh, another example that I wanted to show real quick is uh, an analytics example. So uh, when we look for an insider uh, threat or, or even uh, an outside, outsider uh, attacker that is uh, you know, targeted, uh, we typically don't see malware so, you know, so often, right? I mean, it's, it could be anybody from within the organization. They don't need malware. Uh, if it's somebody from the outside, they may be using malware, but it, it could be a you know, completely different malware that we, don't, we cannot uh, uh, you know, uh, directly find or, or, or stop. Uh, so we, we cannot really assume that every time there is something you know, going, uh, going on, we'll, we'll see malware. Uh, but there is really a lot of, uh, there are a lot of hints in the actual behavior uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so, so this is an example where uh, somebody uh, did some reconnaissance uh, using felt connect. Felt connection is, uh, are, are, can be used for, uh, uh, you know, during reconnaissance and, uh, and find the, the relevant uh, machines that are, you know, vulnerable to some or, or you know, offer some services within the network. Uh, so this is an example how, with analytics, we learn uh, which, uh, which IP addresses within the organization are active and which are not active. And if we see connections or connection attempts, <coughs> Uh, that are failed uh, to uh, destinations that are not, not active, that basically don't have anything behind them. This is actually something that we uh, want to flag. So um, there are a lot of failed connections in the network, tens of thousands of them in, in every uh, network, and you know, on every every day it could be in an hour even. Uh, but really, only very specific uh, you know instances of those are, are interesting from a security perspective. So this is one example. Another example is uh, you know brute force onto. Um, one of the services, so this is a MySQL server. Uh, a brute force into that server means that there are a lot of legitimate connections. Uh, but if, when you look at the bulk of the connections, you see that something is wrong. Uh, you know, why, why would anybody uh, create so many connections to the same service? Um, if we look at the details, we can see, again, you know, quick investigation, we can see that uh, these connections are uh, you know, basically using the command line um, of, uh, that connects to MySQL, but with different passwords. So somebody is trying to guess passwords. So again, this is uh, you know, a very quick way to, uh, to find out what, what was going on. But the, um, the, the data behind it is really all the connections out there. We learn what's normal. We identify the abnormal behavior. And as you can see, in that case, the abnormal behavior is many, many connections. Uh, so 
you know, taking all of that together, building the, the you know the right uh, uh, level of incident, and showing all all the de uh, the details for investigation is really the you know the secret sauce behind uh, Cortex XDR.